A few days ago, we asked you to send in questions that you really wanted to ask Hope and I. And we're going to dish all the details next. Just in case you don't know us, and you're about to get to know us a whole lot better, I'm Hope. (laughs) And I'm Larry. And we're Under the Medium, where we talk every week about practical frugality. Now, before we get into your questions, we actually have something very special to share with you. We waited to unbox our silver play button. Yeah, we have not seen this yet. It came yesterday and we did not want to do it without all of you being with us. So we are going to unbox it live. And before we do that, we just we just want to say without you, we could not have had this or the YouTube channel. So we really appreciate you, the viewers, being with us. All right, you ready? I am ready. Okay, we got the bottom flap. And here it is. Oh, we got foam. We really haven't seen this yet. Nope. Oh, Uh, we got a letter from YouTube. Yeah. And here in plastic is the silver button. How about that? And uh, that represents 100,000 subscribers. All right, we're going to put it behind us. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that, that really is very exciting. All right, well, Larry's putting that behind us. Uh, We decided maybe once a month, tell us if you like this idea in the comments section, that we just do a QA and a and you guys could ask us whatever it is that you want to know from us. When we asked for questions, you gave us questions. There were over 40 (laughs) questions that were submitted. Well, we're not going to be able to get to all of them on this Q&A session. So we are thinking that next month we'll do another Q&A. A lot of you actually sending questions this month about how we teach our kids about money, uh, about whether our grown children are frugal or not. So we sort of collected all of those questions in one area. We're gonna answer all of those on the Q&A in August. So if you have questions for us about how we dealt with money and kids, drop those questions in the comment section below and we're gonna tackle all of those on the August Q&A. You won't want to miss the August Q&A because we are going to do a giveaway. It's of a great product that we just found out about recently. It teaches kids ages K through 12th grade all about how to handle money. We're super excited about it, so make sure you're watching in August. Now, on to the July Q&A. Oh boy, here we go. Now, I want to say this. We have not prepped for these answers. So this is going to be off the cuff. And you're going to find that Hope will have different answers than I will. So this should be interesting. We're going to try to do really minimal editing so you get to see the real deal (laughs) about how we feel about the answers to these questions. We've read through the questions, but we haven't discussed them at all. I haven't gotten through all. I read through a few. I haven't gotten through all of them. Okay. Question number one from RN. And I'm interested in this answer. Uh, What's the first thing Larry wants to do when he retires? I don't know. What do you have planned for me? (laughs) (laughs) That was like the spot on perfect answer. No kidding. Okay. The real answer is I plan on just taking some time for myself a little bit at first. I'll probably do a little more bike riding. I got some more cleaning out to do on the house. and I've got to prepare my editing room and set up some equipment. And so it, for right now, just I kind of just sliding into the idea of not working. It'll take a little while to get adjusted to that. All right. Question number two from RN. What would you say was your number one best thing you did as a couple to start your frugal debt-free journey? I remember what that was. Well, I, so I'm going to give my answer. Okay. Uh, my answer is that we got on the same page. We came to a point where we were in agreement as to what the plan was and that we were going to communicate very openly, clearly, and honestly about money and that we'd work together as a team. 
For me, getting debt-free was a result of finding out what the advantages were to being debt-free, besides the obvious ones. Uh, I found out that it was just cheaper to live if you're not paying interest and you're actually giving yourself a raise by going debt free. And that was learned through a gentleman by the name of Larry Burkett, who had a money managing show on the channel that Hope worked at. What do you consider your biggest fail in your debt free journey and how did you turn it around? You want to answer that first? Okay. The biggest fail oh, was we got into a hurry buying a car. And this was our, I think it was one of our very first debt-free cars. We got into a hurry. We bought too old of a car. It was very poorly designed and we ended up losing our shirt on it. My answer <laughs> is that I think the biggest fail we had was that we, it took us a long time to figure out how to stop looking at our savings as one great big green pile of money just to be spent. It didn't have a purpose. It was just savings. So once we, you know, delineated different short, medium and long-term goals to that savings pile, then we realized we had a whole lot less to spend than we thought we did. Mm -hmm. Sheila asks, I know that Larry has had some health issues with his heart. Do you use any herbal supplements or over-the-counter supplements to help with the health issues? Well, first, let me just quickly sum up what the heart issue was. I had fourth stage heart failure. I was diagnosed in 2018. My heart only had a 10% ejection fraction, and I had a marble-sized blood clot in the left ventricle. So I was in pretty bad shape, and it was because the heart was hit with a virus. So that was what the problem was. So um, the supplement that I use is CoQ10, and I'm on some other medication that actually slows the heart down and lowers blood pressure. Not that I have high blood pressure, but it just helps take the load off the heart. I've been doing great since 2018 and have really made a quite a comeback from that. Affordable Living wants to know, Genuinely curious about the dog situation. <laughs> Several of you asked about the dog situation. Uh, is it that you're never going to have another one or are you just waiting for Larry to retire and then you can care for it? Um, okay, I'll give, should we answer? We'll answer together. Okay, so just answer yes or no. Are we going to get another dog when you retire? No. no. <laughs> I'm glad we're in agreement with that. So, we are. So what is our, and because we really do love dogs. I, I absolutely love dogs. They are my favorite animal, and I've always loved them. We don't want to be tied down right now with having a pet. We want to be free to yeah. do some traveling and do some things uh, that won't require the responsibility of handling a dog. Whether we get one later on or not, is uh, that's, a, that's a question we, we don't might. have an answer to exactly. I, I love dogs, though, and we we'll always uh, have an appreciation for them. All right, Alive in Christ would like to know, hi, I was wondering why you chose to be vegan, another popular question, um, and also if you are Amish. Okay, I heard you saying you went to the Amish shop. Anybody can shop at the Amish shop, and no, we are not Amish. Uh, we became vegan. My father died of a massive coronary heart attack at the age of 47. So when I was about 45, I started doing research, a lot of reading, a lot of research, uh, trying to find out the link between heart disease and our diet. And it was after all of that research that we chose to become vegan or uh, whole food plant-based, I guess, as some might say. And I think that really helped with my situation when I had the heart issues in 2018. R. Theralt would like to know, are you part of a community, friends, groups, church, etc., that also values or is built around frugality. All right. Um, no specific groups. I would say that a lot of our friends uh, tend to be on the frugal side, although not all of them. Uh, I think although our friends have not always been in agreement <laughs> uh, with our decisions, they have been very gracious and they've been very supportive regardless of whether they would choose to live a very frugal lifestyle or not. Next question from the same viewer. Does living beneath your means from a lifestyle or ideological standpoint affect your social relationships in any way? 
I don't think it does. I think maybe it affects some of the activities that we yeah. do. We, we pull out of things that are going to cost a lot of money, but we find things that we can do with our friends that don't cost a lot. So uh, I guess we just make some adjustments, don't we? Yvonne would like to know, what is your view, both financial and in terms of health, on organic produce? It costs a lot. It costs significantly more than conventionally yeah. grown produce. Uh, living on a tight budget, we had to sort of grapple with this whole question a lot. And so the conclusion we kind of came to is regardless of whether we are eating organic or eating conventionally grown produce, the whole idea is to eat mostly plants. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I, I think really it, for us, it came down to a choice of what would we prioritize? Was it the dirty dozen that the environmental working group always puts out every year uh, where they do the top 10 or 12 uh, products that have the most pesticide residue on them or those the ones we're going to focus on trying to buy organic. That's kind of what we did when the kids were young. Now, uh, we belong to a community-supported agriculture group. So honestly, during the summer, a lot of the produce we eat is by default organic because the farmer that we purchase uh, from has uh, organic farming practices that he uses and only organic uh, farming practices. So it's just a matter, honestly, of what you can afford and what your priorities are. In terms of buying organic from stores, we yeah. usually buy it if it's on sale or if it's reasonably yeah. priced. But for the most part, we don't buy it from different stores. It just costs way too much. We can't afford it. I would suggest if you want to buy more organic, that you really look around in your area and source places where you can buy organic and still not uh, spend a lot of additional money. For instance, our favorite a local ethnic food market, we've talked about them a lot on the channel. They have the best prices. If you're going to buy from a store, uh, they have the best prices on organic anywhere in town, which is surprising. Okay, Baby Deer 219. This is kind of a long question, but I'll read it through. My husband and I watch you guys religiously. We aspire to be more like you both. We are semi-freshly married youngsters, and we always say it is like looking at our future when we watch your content. I hope See, that she means that in a really good way. <laughs> uh, seeing as we already live much of the same way as you do. We were wondering what some of your favorite hobbies are. Are you frugal in hobbies or do you splurge sometimes? Thanks and God bless you and your family. Also, please let Larry get his puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So many of you like comment about Larry's puppy and how he needs one. I appreciate the support. Uh, so first of all, thank you for being a viewer. And uh, we remember, and it feels like yesterday, I know in your spot, it doesn't feel like in 30 years, you're going to look back and think all oh, that went so fast, but it really does go fast. And it seems like it does. just yesterday that we were in your shoes. Yeah. And we also had mentors that we looked at and went, oh my gosh, they live just like we do. How cool is that? Uh, so I think having mentors is super important because it does help you, you know, understand that there is a pathway here. And, and it's still a really good life filled with joy and abundance. Uh, hobbies. Well, for hobbies, I think we look for ways to do it frugally. I don't think we splurge an awful lot on our hobbies. My main hobbies are bicycling, photography, uh, piano, hiking. We've done some camping. We haven't done too much recently. Um, you know, those, those are kind of the main hobbies and really photography doesn't cost that much anymore. You have a digital camera and you don't have to develop film. So it isn't like I have a huge budget. I buy used cameras off of eBay. My two cameras, one of them's 12 years old and the other one's about eight years old. Uh, so I don't spend an awful lot of money on that. And uh, biking, I just sold a bike that I've had for 25 years. My other ones I've had for about 25 years. So we, I don't go through bikes very fast and I don't look for ways to improve them. We did get an e-bike uh, in April, but that was a little different circumstance. A company provided that for us. So I don't think the biking for me to, it costs a lot, of, a, a lot of money. Piano, I've got the same piano that I've had since I was seven years old. It was given to my family. So virtually no money in that except for a little maintenance to keep it tuned. 
uh, the other thing Larry's been really good at through the years is figuring out how to support his own hobbies. So he would go through the house and sell some things that we no longer wanted or needed in order to get some cash in hand to fund the next level of whatever hobby he was in at that time. So it didn't cost us much out of pocket, but it cost him a little bit of time and effort to figure out what he no longer wanted or needed and wanted to sell. So that is one way to fund hobbies uh, when you don't have a lot of money. Uh, for hobbies, for me, I've never had a lot of hobbies. I was involved for years in a semi-professional singing group in town that really didn't cost me any money to be involved in the group, but of course it cost like ticket money to go to the concerts a uh, couple, three times a year. And I absolutely loved that. I seen Second Soprano for those of you who really desperately want to know. And that was a really wonderful experience. The other thing that we did uh, and I don't know where you're at on on you know, children. And we already told you in August, we're going to talk about kids and money uh, in August in, in detail in that Q&A. One of the things that we did for the kids when they were young was we picked one premium membership a year and purchase that membership for them. So we have a local wildlife park, we have a zoo, we have a museum. Uh, there might've been some other opportunities when they were younger and you would get one family membership. So that whole year they knew, hey, we're gonna hang out the wildlife park. And we did a lot of it. Like we made the most out of that membership. We were there all the time. But they knew in 12 months we were gonna switch and it helped them because we would rotate them. So, you know, every three, four years, it was the wildlife park and then the zoo and they knew they were going to get to like experience that to the fullest for that year and then they would move on to something else because kids get bored you know they don't need five memberships at one time so that was something that i would say that we splurged one of my hobbies i used to also get some nice season tickets to our local orchestra uh, i was able to dub over all of their 1950s reel-to-reel -reel tapes. I and mean, it was a big job. It was a four-month job. And the payment was a season of tickets for the entire family of six. So that was a real nice payoff. That was so much fun. We had a blast. Yeah. Speaking of splurging, Lori wants to know, if you could take a vacation anywhere and money was not a concern, where would you go and what would you do there? That's an awfully hard question. Larry, I can sense it in his eyes. He has an answer. I'm going to give mine first. Um, we've never, ever had a deep burning desire to uh, visit someplace overseas. So I probably would not vote for anything overseas. I probably would go back to like out west like Yellowstone. Oh, that's too funny. Wyoming, that area. But I would I would spend an extended time there. And I wouldn't, if money is not an object, I'm not temp camping, y'all. I'm going to get someplace really nice to stay. And a hot tub is going to be a must. <laughs> it's funny because I was going to mention Yellowstone and Grand Tetons. Now, yeah. I've actually been there three times in my lifetime. Hope and I went there in 1992 in a Chevette. And that was an absolute <laughs> blast. And we tent camped, but we were a lot younger. But I uh, I would certainly choose to do that and take, uh, if we could take the whole family, that would be nice. But I yeah. also love Colorado. And I loved uh, doing some backpacking around the Sangre de Cristo mountain range. That's south of Rocky Mountain National Park, quite a bit south, and not heavily traveled. And you're talking... 13,000, 14,000 foot peaks, beautiful mountains. So I would choose to go back out there and do some camping. Tell us in the comments section, we wanna know your answer to this question. Money's no object, where are you gonna go? This next question, we are actually shocked at the number of times this question <laughs> is asked to us. All right, here we go. Let, let's think about this answer based on the fact that we're frugal, okay? What do you think the answer is to this? We're going to give you the question. He's going to give you a straight up answer. Yes. Does Larry dye his hair? Okay, folks, before we were on HD, you couldn't see my hair very well. But if you look real carefully, you will see gray in this hair on top. It is not dyed. I have never 
dyed my hair. I don't do much of anything with my hair, and that is my preference. <laughs> Amen. I have worn this same hairstyle since I was in the fifth grade, except the beard. So why the beard is white and this is black, I have no idea. That's just the way God made it. So this is what it is. I do not dye my hair. There you go. You have set the record yes. straight. No <laughs> hair dye no for Bob. him. Or for me. They didn't ask me because they can see the gray in my hair. It's like, she ain't dying her hair. All right. Patty would like to know, do you ever consider the money you saved as well as the peace of mind because you stay healthy by eating a plant-based diet? Well, I, you know, so here's, here's the truth, Patty. Even if plant-based eating cost more than eating a conventional diet, we would figure out how to put that money into our budget, into our food budget, because it is so really, really important to us. And that's what's great about, about people learning to budget and being debt free is figuring out what's really important to you. Because we've told you a million times, and we'll say it again, that frugality is not about deprivation. It's just about choosing when, where, and how you're gonna spend your money. And for us, even if it, it's great that it, it's really inexpensive to eat a plant-based diet. We love that part of a plant-based diet. But even if it wasn't, we'd figure out how to, how to do it. Let me comment on this just a little bit. For, for One of the things that you said is, do you ever consider the money you have saved as well as the peace of mind because you stay healthy by eating a plant-based diet? We're very thankful mm -hmm. for the way that we choose to live because of the benefits. Mm -hmm. One of the benefits I always say to hope is that we can sleep at night knowing that we don't owe anybody anything. It's a nice thing to have as a little piece of financial security. And let me say, I wasn't real excited about going plant-based at first, no, but now don't. I have adjusted to the point where I love the dishes that Hope cooks. And you've seen some of the, the cooking videos. This food is very tasty. It's good. And so I really don't miss what I used to eat. Speaking of recipes, Bonnie wants to know, will you be uploading more vegan recipes? Probably every once in a while, you would be amazed at the amount of editing that it actually <laughs> takes to do one of those videos. Oh, it's man. far more like time consuming than doing this video. So that's part of it is just figuring out how, how and when we're going to find the time to like do all of those minutia of edits it takes to actually show a recipe. Yeah, just that nine minute video we did last Thursday where they went to the Dollar Tree store, Hope and Dan, I did the videotaping with the GoPro on that. They had to go twice. They went over there first and they scoped out the store. Then we went back over later. We spent probably about an hour in the store. We had to reshoot yeah. quite a few of those segments that look like they're going real smooth. They don't always go smooth. Then we get back home and we and she was up until about 11.30 with Dan cooking all that food. I get up at 5.30 in the morning. So I was up till 11.30. We were all really tired. And then the next night editing all all those pieces together, probably 60 pieces of video plus stills. We worked on that till another, about another 11 o'clock night. So it does take a lot of time and effort to put those together. I think it was worth it though. I, they did a fantastic job of what they did and Hope got a, a week's worth of cooking done in one night. That was awesome. <laughs> did, that was like really cool. Yeah. All right, Rochelle Thundercloud. Hey, Rochelle. Um, she is a special viewer of ours. How did you guys come up with the names for your kids and were you trying for a girl? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> that is a great question. Well, I'll answer the first one. Our oldest son is named after my father and grandfather. The next son, I was reading in the Bible about the story of John the Baptist. And when in the Bible it says his name is John, that stood out to me as the name we should name our next son. We knew it was a boy. All right, and then the other two boys, Larry named all the kids. So I have to say, uh, he did a really great job. Yes, we discussed it, but honestly, I, I gave him that privilege. I did uh, pick some middle names though. So the first names definitely were his choice. Were we trying for a girl? We're gonna answer together. Ready? One, two, three. No. no. You would say no? <laughs> We were hoping for a girl. <laughs> we were hoping for a girl. We weren't really trying for, for no. anything, just have uh, whatever, whatever we were going to have. <laughs> All right. Esther would love to know, is your home paid for? And when did your hobby plan on retiring? So 
uh, Esther. Yes, our home is paid for. Uh, we bought our first home. It was in an estate. It was a home that had had nothing, and I do mean nothing, updated since 1930. And so we got a really screaming good deal on that house. Had great bones, and we basically remodeled that house one piece at a time as we saved a little bit of money. Uh, we owned that house 18 years. We paid that mortgage first mortgage off in five years. We had all that equity in that home plus some savings, and then we saved uh, in 20 months uh, 30000 additional dollars so that we could pay cash for our second home. So yes, the house is paid for. Larry, you want to announce it? Can I do one of my drum rolls? I'm going to do a drum roll. Larry, <laughs> when are you retiring? I am planning on retiring the last my last work day being December the 9th and that is a Friday. So that is that. It is uh, coming up quickly. <laughs> Are we excited? Um yeah, I'd say we're definitely looking forward to it. This is you know other than getting married and buying a house and having kids, this is probably the most dramatic change mm -hmm. we've made in decades. And so I I, I think it's a little bit scary. Um, we, we definitely have, we know it's going to be a learning curve. So, you know, we're going to figure this out a piece at a time. But we have a great financial planner who's helping us figure it out a step at a time. So. And in the meantime, I'm not really counting the days down on my job. I enjoy my job. I have great people to work with. So I'm not dreading having to work until December the 9th. Uh, it will be a very nice, I, I think it'll be a good transition. I'm looking forward to it. Cruiser asks, do you have go bags or bug out bags? If so, what do you put inside? Now, this is a very common yeah. thing to have for preppers. They, uh, they'll have a bag that'll have some things in it that they can grab very quickly, put in their car in case they have to leave in a, in a difficult or a serious situation. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we do not have any bug out bags. It's something we might look into just to have something prepared to grab quickly in case we have a, a, an emergency weather situation where we have to leave quickly. I think it's a good idea. So we really haven't put any of that together. When we do, we'll talk about it on this program. I will say that we are reading some fantastic preparedness books. And in the next few weeks, we're going to be sharing information with you all about what we have learned from those preparedness books. So be looking for that video coming up in just a bit. We could not get to all of the questions mm -hmm. on this video. We've held some questions over for the Q&A in August. And remember that Q&A and that video primarily to remind you will focus on children and money and how we taught our boys about money. We're going to try to get them into the studio with us to answer your questions as well. Make sure you leave those questions about kids and money in the comment section of this video. And hey, if you're ready for a video on tips on how we lived frugally and raised our family and made some great big goals and met them. We got a video ready, it's right over there.